All right, hey guys, uh, it's Monday. I'm getting ready to do my video lesson. Arlo, say hi. There's my dog, you see my dog. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do volume, uh, but word came down today, if you haven't heard, you gotta stay in your house for the next two weeks. So I guess no excuses not getting your work done, right? Um, so volume uh, today, oh, uh, before I go into that, I just wanna give you guys props for getting your work in, staying on top of things. Most of you are doing a great job, so keep it up. Don't forget quizzes, con, any of that stuff, worksheet, you can turn it in any time. So even over spring break, so even though it's not really going to feel like spring break, you can still turn that in whenever. So I got codes. I will keep my Canvas page up all the way down. I won't erase anything. So all the e-learning days will be there. Just find what you're missing and get there. All right. So today's going to be quick. We're going to get into volume today and tomorrow. Actually, today, tomorrow and Thursday. Friday, since that's the day before spring break. I will take it easy on Friday. So uh, today is prisms and cylinders. So there's a general formula that we use for volume. And volume, if you don't know, is basically it's the amount of space that fills something up. Whereas we just came from surface area, surface area is the distance, uh, the areas around everything. Volumes, if I were to fill this up with water, it wouldn't take a lot of water in this, but that's all that is. That's how much can this take, all right? How much space does it fill up? And for prisms and cylinders, there's a general formula that we do. It's basically what you'll see a lot, and I don't know what your formula sheet says. It may say B big times H, or it may give you the individual formula, and I'll talk about each of those. Basically, volume is big B stands for the area of the base. So on any prism, could be a triangular prism, base is a triangle. Uh, rectangular prism, base is a rectangle. Pentagonal prism, base is a pentagon. So you find the area of that base, that 2D figure, and then with all of them, multiply it by the height or the H, the height of the prism, the height of the cylinder, okay? And you follow that. So really, what you're going to see tonight or tomorrow, whenever you do it, some of you start early. Let's start with our most basic one. So here's a rectangular prism. If I want the volume of this, you could think of the base as this rectangle. So it's basically length times width times the height of this prism. Or if you do it this way, it doesn't change. It's still... Length times width, if you want to call this the base, it really doesn't matter what the base is. It's still just length times width times the height. You're multiplying those three numbers together for a rectangular prism. Don't make it harder than it is. That's it. Next one. Triangular prism. This is a little more difficult. So a triangular prism, and we don't have to worry about nets with this, okay? We keep these 3D. Basically, you're finding the area of the triangle. One half base times height, but this is the base and this is the height of the triangle. So there's two heights that we deal with on a triangular prism. The first is the height of the triangle. So you got to find the area of the triangle. There's your big B right here. Here's your height of the prism. That's the H that you multiply it by. So you do have the height of the triangle, which you use to find the area of the triangle, but then you take that area and you multiply it by the height of the prism. Cylinder, the third one we'll, I'll show you. Well, here's your formula. Area, big B is area of the circle, pi r squared. You'll probably see pi r squared times the height of the prism or the cylinder. That's the distance between those two circles. So what you're going to see probably on your formula sheet for a volume on the cylinder, you're going to see pi r squared h. It's just pi times the radius squared times the height of that cylinder. So, and then the last one, I don't know that you'll see it tonight. I think maybe on the riddle worksheet if I give you one. You may see like a, what is this, a hexagonal prism. Well, you don't know how to find the area of a hexagon yet. Okay, you will next year, but this year you don't. So what they have to do is they're just going to say, hey, big B is 50, for instance. They're going to give you the area of the hexagon. All you got to basically find is what's the height of this hexagonal prism. You take those and multiply it together. So just like on Canvas, what I put on your page today, it's just all of these are just one big multiplication problem. You just got to get the right numbers to multiply together. Use your area formulas. Use your volume formulas. They're on your formula sheet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to post the worksheet now. What time is it? It's like 6 o'clock. Uh, Monday night, I'll post the worksheet. I will post the key later. So you can still send me. you got to send me your picks, right? We can't wait now. You can't keep them in your binder because we don't know when and if we're coming back to school. So take a picture. Most of you are pretty good. Try and make it as clear as you can. Okay, get as close as you can. Take that picture so I can look at some things because I've been writing people back, telling them the mistakes, what they're doing wrong. Um, I'll put the key on probably tomorrow. So you can check that key with just answers, not work. So send me your work, all your work. What are you multiplying together with your answer? You'll get full credit, all right? Keep up with your work. I know you got a lot going on. So uh, I don't expect you to spend two hours on this. But get your stuff done. 
Good seeing you. Uh, we will see you. I don't know if they'll see you again. My daughter's laughing at me. Show my daughter laughing at me. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, take care. Uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>